regular meeting of the Wallingford Inland Wetlands Water Course Commission Water. The time is 7.09, and the date is October 5th, 2022. Please join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Eileen McKean. Nick Kern. Jim Mike Deborah Phillips. Jeffrey Nacchio. Michael Caruso. Jim Heilman. Aaron O'Hare, Environmental Planner. Oh, I have a couple corrections for one. What? I have a couple corrections for a minute. Yeah, to use the microphone, can't hear you. Oh, pardon me. Borrow this one. Can I borrow? Yeah. Hi. Okay, I have a couple corrections to the minutes. Actually, on page one in that first paragraph. Okay, second. What, what page? Page one. Yes. In the first paragraph, second line. You called the commission to order, and I didn't even repeat the date that was above on Wednesday, September 7, 2022, comma. So that should be in there at 7.05 p.m. So on Wednesday, I'll be adding that September 7, 2022. In that top paragraph. So that needs to be added for the minutes. In the top paragraph there. And on page 18, at G, receipt of new applications. So, I had a, I had a, okay. Page 18. Yeah, bottom of the page, receipt of new applications. When it says number two, I numbered the application number wrong. I copied it wrong. The agenda was correct. Number two is number A22-8.2 okay. at 1730 Tuttle Avenue. Okay. So, and I have one. Okay. Um, Page, the, who's present? The um, Carolyn Reynas is not listed either as absent or present, so I'm, I'm not sure. She came in a little bit late that day. All right, so she should be listed at the top as present. Oh, list her at top, okay. And and you can put in parentheses, she came in late, but whatever. I can put the time she entered. She's got to be listed one way or the other. Yeah. Oh, thank you for picking that up. Three corrections. Commissioners, you heard the three changes to the minutes of last month's meeting. Any other comments? Then I'll entertain a motion to approve with the new conditions. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the minutes of the regular meeting on September 7, 2022, be approved as submitted with the corrections made tonight. Second. Motion made, second. Any discussion? All for a vote. Nick? Staying? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. This whole thing with a public hearing uh, and the severity of the public Pardon hearing. Pardon me. Um, Jim, is your, your voice is not caring now. But it was before. There it goes. Okay. All right. The severity of this public hearing has brought a lot of things to light. Um, whether people are qualified that that uh, are not sitting at the table. I'm sorry. Your voice is still dim, according to the. What's the matter AC. now? AC. AC's drowning you out. What drowns me out? Um, air conditioning. A air conditioning drives drowns me out. Somewhat. Yes, please. So, do they have to turn it up? Kathy, do they have to turn it up in the back? Um, just lift your Could the ADTV people please what? What do you do? increase the volume uh -huh. on the microphone? What about it? Can you lift it up? Okay. It's going straight up. Yeah, I readjusted it. Oh, I don't know what that's supposed to do with the air conditioning in there. Everything's okay. fine. 
Oh, she, Everything's fine. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could you just note what, where we are on the agenda? We haven't even started the agenda yet. Okay. Okay, we just got the minutes approved. I'm discussing the fact that we're, uh, the, have new, we've had new procedures here dealing with public hearings. There's been a whole list of new rules and regulations brought before us. Um, I feel now that when there's a public hearing, the, the commission is like on jury duty. Don't talk to anybody. Go to your room and behave yourself and don't talk to anybody. So uh, don't discuss it, don't do this, don't do that. But we are going to get into the consideration of the public hearing item D on the agenda. But before we discuss the public hearing, um, as I did in the previous meetings and public hearing, uh, any of the commissioners that were not here for every meeting, I asked the same thing. And this is directed to Nick Kern. He's a regular seat seating member. And uh, two questions, or one question. The question is, do you feel capable of voting on this application tonight or this public hearing tonight um, by, by reviewing the, the, the minutes that was received, by uh, studying Aaron's reports, and by watching all the video that's, that's on it. Um, if you feel that you're comfortable with, with uh, uh, being able to, to yeah, uh, vote on this application, so be it. Mr. Chairman, I feel comfortable uh it's funny how much more you see sitting at home watching it on TV than you do sitting here. So I feel comfortable making the decision. Um, you know, I may have not been here to ask the questions, but they were answered on by somebody else, or I've reviewed them, and uh, like I say, I've watched it at home on, on uh, the television, and I feel comfortable. Okay. With that being said, the latest uh, memo from Janice, the town attorney, indicated that only the five voting members can discuss this application tonight, or the, not the application, discuss the deliberation of the vote, the, how we're going to come up with the vote. As we have in the past, alternates have shared in information, but Janice indicates that that's not so tonight. So the, the five members will be Nick, myself, Deb, Jeff, now, going into the next step of this, this process, um, one of the major issues associated with this application is significant activity. Now, Aaron just generated a, a memorandum dated today, October 5th, and I think it will behoove us to sit a moment and read the, this information because it's going to be a major part of uh, what we're going to end up doing here tonight deciding tonight. So let's take a couple of minutes, Commission, and uh, read the, read the, the Aaron's memo over.
Well, okay. All right. Um, the the uh, what's underlined in the first page is, is probably the more important part. And the, this finding and reasons, therefore, shall be stated on the record in writing. So that's pretty much where what direction we've got to head. So the fees and prudent alternative. Now, Aaron, I don't know how you structured this or what your intentions on structuring this. Is it based on any particular item or is it based on the whole project? The whole project, but I took it straight out of the, um, the regulations. I didn't. Yeah. These yeah. items are straight out of the document. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. So the point being is we're not looking at one in, like the detention pond or anything else. The whole overall project. Is there feasible and feasible and prudent alternative to the whole project? Well, you're supposed to look at each regulated activity. You're supposed to look at each regulated because activity? Because you're the wetland commission. In other words, the planning and zoning looks at the whole project. We look at the impacts to the wetlands and watercourses and 50 feet from the wetlands and watercourses. So that's why I included on page two a listing of the regulated activities that they're, they're trying to get here. Okay? They're trying to obtain a wetland permit for these regulated activities. But the, these are just the regulated activity. They're not designated as significant. Well, if you take it all in all, I think when we made the determination of significance at the July 27th hearing, it was taking all of these sort of together. Well, that's why it's going to be difficult to talk about prudent and feasible activities for each individual item. Okay. I'm, that's what's laid out in the regulations for us to do. I will point out that number, I wrote it as number seven, the creation of this, this 12 acres uh, net increase in surface area, that's the biggest regulated activity they're asking for. That pretty uh, well encompasses the project. Pretty much, but some of the other ones, you know, for instance, road construction near the small pond, that's really nothing. I mean, they're putting in silt fence, but it's not a big deal at all. It's, it's nothing. It won't impact that small pond at all if they're improving the road. They're not widening the road. So that's like a really very minor regulated activity. And that's in here, um, where I have it, I have it as number three. So that one, you know, is there an alternative? I would say no. I mean, that's, that's a very minor impact that I would have no trouble with the approval or if I were you, you know, it's, but some of these others, maybe you want to kick around a little bit and talk about? Well, I mean, we've heard the application. Now, if, if, if you want to get involved in, in uh, talking about these seven items, is that what you've already taken care of a couple of them? I mean, you, you've, gone, you've lived this thing for three months or for six months or however long. And a yes. year before. So, yes, we have all this paperwork, but we haven't lived this application. So what are, you, what are you saying to us here? What are you telling us here that we should know? Okay, each member doesn't have to respond to all, except A through G, seven, is that, or eight, whatever. I, I don't expect each member to respond. This is more like a primer to walk you through to say, okay, how do I really feel about that regulated activity? What, did they satisfy my concerns? And it helps you walk through each and every one of them 
to, and you might want to bring up, say, well, I was concerned about this, and someone else on the commission says, but you know what, they're going to do this. They're going to add this and the flocculence and whatever. Okay, that's the deliberation, back and forth. Somebody still ha someone might say, I still have a remaining concern about X, Y, and Z. And someone else can say, well, I was concerned too, but then I heard on, at the, the second hearing, they're going to do this. And they go back and forth. And it, right, well, it, commissioners, is, is there any discussion on item one? Uh, draw down a water level in pond two to two feet below outlet pipe. This is just a temporary drawdown, correct? During the construction phase, yes. During the construction phase. Anybody got any concerns? No. no? All right. So, uh, number two, introduction of temporary construction runoff discharge to existing small pond from upgraded construction activities. Well, that's what they're doing using the small pond for try and control that. So is there a feasible and prudent alternative to that? I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't see, I don't see one, but commissioners? I don't see one. Insul number three, installation of sill fence within several feet of small edge of pond, associated with proposed driveway improvements. Well, of course, that is something we would, we would want on any application, right. uh, sill fence involved. Number four, introdu introduction of temporary construction runoff from a 1.6 acre temporary sediment basin discharge outlet to Upland Review area, hence the Westlands and hence the Muddy River. If you're going to des design the project, I don't know where else, where else would you put it, you know, what's the, what's the alternative? Discharge of post-construction stormwater to small pond with volume of flows to be received less than existing volume of flows due to the decrease in the size of the contributory drainage area from 37 acres to 7 acres. Where does the rest of the water go, Aaron? Or the drainage area go? Um, it goes to the... 1.6 acre large new detention basin they're going to build. There's only two places it goes. Um, like 30% goes to the small pond and 70% goes to the large detention basin they're, they're gonna build. Today, that small pond takes everything from the headquarter site, the old headquarter site and all the, the old parking, it takes all of that. So it's gonna take a lot less so if this is built out. Because all that is going to go to all that large detention basin. And that's why it has to be so big. Because it's going to take that whole warehouse, all the parking around the warehouse is going to take it. All that's going to go to the new detention, uh, detention basin. Commissioners, any comments on that? Introduction of new flows of Upland Review Area and hence to wetlands and Muddy River from proposed 1.6 acres Sediment basin discharge of treated runoff post construction. Uh, flows the 1.6 acre. Commissioners? Nothing? All right, number seven. Creation of a 12 acre net increase in surface area related to the construction of a 450,000 square foot warehouse and associated parking area and drives on the site of the formal Bristol Myers headquarters building and parking area entailing significant cut and fill operations. Wow. Uh, when you say surface area, you, you're referring to impervious surface area? Yeah, the creation of impervious, we also include semi-impervious like gravel would be included, but yes. Uh, they get to net out. In other words, they were allowed to net out the surface area of the original headquarters and the original parking area, you know, that's sitting up there today. It's impervious. If we go up there today, all that is impervious today. So they get to net, under our regulations, they get to net that out, and they're left with the 12 acres is the new area they're going to they're gonna pave. 
They've submitted drawings to that effect. All those drawings with it being superimposed, the pink, the headquarters was in pink, and their new one, I think, is in blue. And they, they, this is over the summer. They gave a lot of different prints of that um, in their exhibit drawings, you know, to show, to demonstrate how that was going to net out. That's why they're only creating 12 acres of new surface area. I guess the whole thing is something like 37 acres, but, but. Okay, so the application, the applicant's purpose for, and any feasible and prudent alter, alternatives to, the proposed regular activity, which alter, alternates would cause less or no environmental impact to wetlands and watercourse. Well, when we, now, During the summer, we looked at alternates. I mean, we, I, I think we did. I think we discussed it through the hearing, and I think they, whatever they presented, was was more invasive or more uh, negative than what they proposed. Or some things that staff, various staff members, proposed. They just it wasn't feasible. They they couldn't build it. They couldn't do what was being asked of them. Um, and they had the wetland scientists go through and run through any alternatives and why certain alternatives were rejected or were deemed unnecessary. Okay, going on to the next page. The regulation ship between the short-term and long-term impacts of the proposed. Not allowed to talk. Was there any additional discussion on the seven? Uh, you, uh, you're, I don't think you're supposed to talk, Jim, under Janice's regulation. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, the commissioners, I don't know what uh, she just discussed. Uh, I mean, as, as uh, Aaron stated, that the the uh, they explored all the feasible and prudent, they explored feasible and prudent alternatives, with some of staff saying they weren't feasible. Is that what you just said? Uh, yeah, that was for, we're on B, we're on item B, but let me just look ahead and see if we're going to talk about the creation of the surface area under C. Well, what, what, or, what, what, in other words, that's the biggest impact. That, that's the biggest change to this property. It's the biggest regulated activity. Which is? The creation of the surface area and the cut and fill operation that, because they had to cut down the slope build it up on one side, build it up, cut it down to make that level table in the middle where the, the 10 acre warehouse is going. So that's a lot of moving of earth, cut and fill. So that's where, that's where the potential for environmental impact comes in that one when it rains. Um, now during average rainstorms, they've, they've proposed a robust um, treatment train as they call it, a robust erosion control uh, plan with a lot of belt and suspenders, and then they added more flocculent because they got the message about that silty soil, and they realized they realized this is not regular soil they're dealing with, so they added more flocculants all in the, di the diversion trenches. They're going to have them every 150 feet. If they're going to have flocculent, flock logs, they call them, with jute netting, because the jute netting, that's burlap, it catches any silt that falls out. So they went the extra yard, and a lot of these erosion control uh, places that they're installing a Russian, they went the extra yard. Okay. So, and on the, when they open a slope, they're gonna, they're gonna immediately install um, erosion control blankets and turf, turf blankets, turf reinforcement blankets. So they've done a lot. And that's great for your normal storms. I do have some concerns for the big storms. For your average storm, I think this site will perform well. Who knows when the next big storm's coming? That's yeah. the roll of the dice. Well, in comparison to other activities up there, I don't think any any of the previous ones had the safeguards that we've requested in this one. Uh, inspectors on the soil and erosion control, people there every week on the construction side. I mean, you know the list. It's about a four or five different people for different phases of this thing, you reports to the state, reports to the town. Actually, that was. That was in the last two. This was approved by this commission in 2018, 
and in 2020, and in both, they had the independent erosion control site monitor, and they had the... Um, I was thinking more back in the Bristol-Myers days. Right. And it's also unique to this site. We've never done that on other sites, so this, this does go the extra mile for this site. Um, I'm not so sure. Didn't we do this to the Kohler Center? Wasn't there a, a site investigator? Oh, we got a, yeah, we had um, George Cotter as a consultant out there watching it. You're right. You're right. So a much smaller site. <laughs> much, much, that was like a five-acre site, but yeah. Oh, but it, uh, the, he, in his reports, he was impressed with how, what the job the flock went logs did. Yes. That was the first job with the flock. So getting back to this, you're going to have cuts and fills, and, and they've acknowledged this. If there's a feasible and prudent alternative to that, will it impact the wetlands? I mean, if you're going to reduce the cut and fill, are they going to bring the thing forward off the side of the hill? Okay, that's, that's the most obvious all, alternate design they could do is cut back a little bit. So they don't have to go into that slope. They're going to cut down 60 feet deep on that slope. And I don't I forget how long, 1,700 feet long or something like that. So it, it's a large area. So they could, in theory, you know, move the building over, move, cut it down. But the answer was, when this was posed to them in staff meetings, was that that's what the market wants. They don't want skinny warehouses. They want warehouses of a certain width. So that's why they, they kept to their original design. And by the way, this is the same footprint I was looking at today. This is the same footprint, believe it or not, to, to the 2018. The actual cutting into that slope and the footprint is the same. It's only tweaked a little bit different down where it gets near the small pond. And the other tweak is the main road. They, in the 2018, they were going to widen the road all the way up, the main road. And of course, they were going to develop in the northern parts of the property. But as far as the southern part of the property, it's almost identical. They now have to put tree islands in the parking lot. They didn't have to do that before. They have to stay 100 feet away from any water bodies. That's the new planning and zoning regulation under the watershed zone, the new water sh watershed interchange zone, I think they call it. And uh, so there are a few little tweaks, but the, the massive area, that massive earthwork area is the same. Maybe it's higher. Um, I'd have to check on that. The, the wall, they're building a wall on the, on the um, west side of the, of the warehouse. That's 40 feet. I don't remember. It might not have been 40. It might have been 33, 30 feet in the last, uh, last in the 2018. I'm not sure. Commissioners, any comments? Okay. We're going to go on to C. A relationship between short term and long term impacts of the proposed regulator activity on wetlands, watercourses, and the maintenance enhancement of long term productivity of such wetlands and watercourses. Uh, is there any reason we think there should be uh, anything can be improved on that statement, Eric? I'm reading it myself. Let me let me cogitate a little bit here. Okay, this gets to things that the commission didn't talk about too much, but the folks from the audience, the public, was bringing up long-term impacts that they were concerned about over time. Let's say from uh, de-icing salts. Um, brake linings, you know, oils from the trucks dripping on the roads. That's an environmental impact on diesel as it comes out of the air onto the roads um, that you don't necessarily see in a snapshot. But over time, it's cumulative. And of course, they're concerned about their well water and the town, the city well water, where's, where's the, the city water. Where's the prudent and feasible alternative to what you just described? Um, Any truck on the road is going to spit oil. Well, let's talk about that. Is there any? Let's see. Well, one could cut back the scale of the project. We've, we've just talked about that. They didn't want to do that. Um, the, the water division has exacted from them. A, you know, it's, in the, it's actually in the zoning regs that you cannot use sodium chloride. Uh, 
on any uh, parking area greater than 10 spaces, I believe, in that whole zone. So they have to use an alternative, but there are other, the other de-icing materials are not that much better than sodium chloride. So, you know, and by the way, I have a typo in what I, what I typed you and sent out October 4th, that EPR, I said non-chloride uh, salts or something, it would be non-sodium chlorides. No, it's potassium chloride, the other chlorides that are used on the roads. Um, there's other materials that are starting, that the water division has studied, that are starting to build up in the, uh, in the water when they do their well, testing. That, that part's already in their uh, agreement not to use those salts. On the parking areas, I don't think it applies to the main road, that whether you enter. Well, I, I don't know. I'd be surprised if the snowplow guy has got two different sanders going in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so number D, irreversible and irretrievable loss of wetlands watercourse resources which would cause by the proposed regulator activity, including the extent to which such activity would foreclose a future ability to protect, enhance, or restore such resources, and any mitigated measures which may be considered as a condition of issuing a permit for such activities, but not included to measuring two prevent or minimize pollution and other environmental damage, maintain or enhance existing environmental quality in the following order of priority, restore, enhance, and create product productivity wetland, productive wetlands or watercourse resources. So I think, the, the, I mean, you've gone over this in very great detail with them on their plan. Right? I mean, uh, that's part of their, their plan that they came in with. Um, well, I think you're referring to miti sorry, mitigations. Well, I part? mean, they're, they're certainly not creating uh, ir irreversible and irretrievable loss of wetlands. Well, that's not the intention. It is impacting the headwaters of you know the town's public drinking water supply. So, to that extent, there's a, it's irretrievable. You don't get that back. You know, once it's built, it's built. You don't get headwaters back. So, to that extent. But as far as mitigation matters go, on the two previous applications on this site, the commission exacted mitigations, asked for mitigations. On this one, it, it didn't really come into play. They weren't offering them, but it, it's a different site. It's different. They weren't going into the up, I think that was the key. In the patent, the two previous ones, they were doing a lot of disturbance in the upland review area, a lot more than they are on this one. So as a mitigation, they said, okay, okay, we'll plant back. And they were going to do a lot of planting and a lot of eradication of invasive species and so on. They called it habitat restoration. It was a big deal, uh, especially on the last one. So on this one, um, you could ask for mitigations. Um, I know they asked me, do you want anything? And what do you want? You know, it wasn't this one thing I wanted, same as before for the last two, was removal of this whole stand of trees called Tree of Heaven. Alanthus, you know, tree grows in Brooklyn, that famous tree. It's Asian and it spreads, colonizes by suckers, okay? So I said, you know, we had it going to be eradicated last time as a medication, but it turns out they're going to take it away anyway because of how they're configuring the basin and the road to the basin. So that one was off the table. What they did offer to do, what their wetland scientists wanted to do, um, he, he suggested it and I I saw it when I went out there, so I brought it to his attention. He agreed, and the applicant went along with it. What they're going to do is take every year, hand remove, no, not using chemicals, but with mechanical hand removal of autumn olive that is springing up all over um, by the, lo long, uh, the big pond, the large pond. Now, they used to mow it regularly, like twice a year, or maybe more. But now, you know, it's all left fallow and these autumn olives are springing up. So as part of this, they, it's being folded into their operation and maintenance plan. Once a year, they're going to go out and remove the autumn olive, not all of it on the whole property because there's tons of it, just around where you can see it, around the, the drives, around the, the, the large pond. And um, so that's, that's something that is happening that's good for the property. You could add some more. I mean, I didn't. Um... Well, that isn't. It, 
that isn't what we're trying to decide here after asking more. It's, is there a feasible or alternative plan to that? They've already submitted a plan, and staff has approved the plan. Well, if anything comes to mind, this is your opportunity to add more. Same when, if we get to the stage of condition of approval, you can add some more conditions. I mean, this is your opportunity to do that. Um, maybe someone has an idea. I, um, well, think about it. Okay, number F, the character and degree of injury to or interference with safety, health, or reasonable use of property, which is caused or threatened by the proposed regulator activity. I don't think there's much in that one. Degree of injury? Well... Any, any commissioners, any comments? No? Some of the comments from the public was in terms of health and safety, public health and public safety, in terms of the water quality. That was repeated over and over by the public. Okay, that could fit. Okay, G. Impacts of the proposed regular activity on wetlands and water courses outside the area for which the activity is proposed and future activities associated with or reasonably related to. Proposed regulated activity, which are made invisible by the proposed regulated activity, and which may have an impact on wetlands and watercourses. I think this, this G would would handle downstream. Uh, yes, yeah. downstream flooding, downstream siltation, erosion, and this I went into a little bit in the October fourth environmental planners report. You got. Friday night in Friday night's packet. And basically, if this is, like I said before, they've got a good erosion control plan on this site, but it's a very ambitious cut and fill operation. If everything goes well, it could be, it could be okay. It's just, as I mentioned in that report, you know, there's a lot of things about this site that give, just give you pause. You know, we talked about the storms, and there's no way anyone can control that, you know, but you, you ha it's different from other sites. Like the Orsini warehouse, it's on a flat piece of property, the soils are not troublesome, so it's different. When you have a slope and you have these silty soils, it introduces a lot of factors, and they know that. So that's why they, they push the flocculants, and all these, um, the fair cloth skimmer, which is a sophisticated thing to put in a temporary sediment trap. Most applications, I think we've only seen it once before on another site, you know, and twice on this site. But, you know, these, they're using um, sophisticated erosion control devices as best they can, but there's only so much you can control this site. And that's something that the commission has to weigh. Is, is what if that storm happens? On the other hand, you can't say stop all development on, on rugged sites because it would be a taking, you know? Storms are gonna happen, they're gonna happen, they're happening bigger and more frequently and more intense now, so, you know, are we gonna stop, stop development because of that? You know, so these are things that have to be weighed and taken, you, you just gotta go ahead, you just gotta go ahead with uh, consideration of development on its own merit and um, think of anything you can do to make it better. Is the opportunity to add something to strengthen it or to limit it or to add a condition that we haven't already talked about. We have, if we're going to get to conditions, we have the 11 from before and then last week there were four more added. So now there's um, 15. Um, so, there, there, I ask legal, and yes, you have the opportunity to add well, you, you, a few more if you feel the need. I think that's a grand idea. If we had an option of items to add, but we could come up with options to add that we don't have any idea what they're going to do. 
our time to add those options, we're in the middle of the public hearing. I don't know how you say uh, uh, we want a basketball hoop because that, that'll cut down the, the parking of cars because guys will be playing basketball. Okay. Going through that report, commissioners, any questions? Any concerns? Okay. Now, Aaron, what what is needed based on Janice's information? Does she need a some kind of a motion or some kind of um, a request? Because what what does it say it's in, in writing? She needs something in writing. Oh, oh, I, I. That was, that's not Janice, that's from the regulations, that wording about in writing. Okay. And I, but I did inquire, because I'm like, do we really have to sit here tonight and write it out? And she said no, stating it into the record, and she says she knows from different law cases, they know that you commissioners do something else for a living, you know, so you don't have to like give a dissertation on this, but just when you, you state, you do have to individually state when it comes to time to vote, and I, are we gonna discuss a little more? I don't oh, know, yeah, but yeah. when it comes time to vote, each purse sitting member has to state why there's, if they're gonna vote yay, why? If they're gonna vote no, why? You know, why, why you feel it's necessary to vote no. And does it? Does or yes, it's necessary to vote yes. Does it have to specifically specify a fees and imprudent alternative that you do or you don't think that that's yes, you, you sh yes, it must say that. Yes, that's among, one of the among whatever other items you. Yes, want to that's put a in. requirement for significant impact. That okay. that there's no alternative, and we're going to go ahead with this. This is the best alternative for. And when you say that, it's not f really for the entire project. That's planning and zoning. It's really for those seven regulated activities we talked about, which I listed uh, on tonight's page, so you can look at them again. You know, right. the biggest one being the creation of the surface area, but. But really, there's okay. no alternative to these. Right. This is what you're looking Let's at. Let's move on just yet. No. Um, okay. The commission, have they got any questions about the overall project at this time? Because I think from here, we'll, we'll uh, take the next step. And because she has the, uh, I don't know, 12 or 13, conditions of approval, I think that's when we can possibly get in the rest of the discussion. Now the question becomes if the um, applicant, if the, if the vote is a no vote, we don't need to get into the conditions of approval. If we get into the, uh, if we're going to vote yes, then you certainly need the conditions of approval. So I think in this time, let's look at this like if we were going to vote yes. Let's look at the conditions of approval. Okay. So she said that on the October 4th memo, she, what did you say, you had seven there in or 11? On the one that went out Friday night, October 4th, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. October 4th was last night. Microphone. Oh, October 4th was last night. Um, that's how much paper has gone flying around here on this project. So are you, are you talking about October 4th? Uh, no, let me focus here a little bit, see what night I'm talking about. Um, yeah, okay, so the, the th four new conditions came out on October 4th, and they're on page five of your October 4th um, uh, environmental planners report that was delivered at your house and, and these are, are the four uh, bold print conditions? Yes. Okay. Now, um, w w why we're allowed, I mean, I checked with Janice to make sure we're allowed to add conditions at this late date. And the reason was because, yes, and the answer is because things came in at the, since the hearing technically closed on September 14th, remember you voted to close at September 14th at 5 o'clock. And material documents were flying in from the applicant. I was commenting, engineering was commenting, all this back and forth. So in that process, and since then, there were some things that need to be clarified a little bit. And so that's what these represent. 
clarifications or errors in their document or something like that um, that came to light. So, and, she, and the law department said nothing new, like I can't go talking about, I found a new salamander there or something. Just things that were in the realm of what was discussed at the three nights of hearings but if something came up, and you can see by looking at them, they're the kind of things that someone notices, like, oh, we forgot this, or, oh, look, well, it's, it's not on the site plan. Okay, that let's, kind of let, thing. Let's, we can move on then, right? Yes. We can discuss this and move on. Condition relative to operation and maintenance plan document, also known as stormwater management maintenance plan, and the event site is leased. Uh, this talks about the, the condition that if it's leased to somebody else, the other person has to come in and satisfy all the requirements of the lease. And give ta the town a copy, just like the, the, a regular permittee would give the town a copy, number one. Number two, we want to make sure, let's say the lease party is very happy to take care of the lease area. Well, they're not going to maybe get the daycare or the, the wetland area or the, other, or the northern parking area. They don't care about that. That's probably not going to be under their lease might be, but probably isn't. So to make sure that was folded in, that the owner still takes care of that on, for the maintenance, and the lessee would take care of the maintenance of the warehouse area, or however it's negotiated between those two parties. Whatever, we want to copy, be apprised of the copy of the document and the contact in case something goes. Okay, conditions relative to pipe elevation. Provide a call out on a pertinent revised site plan sheet regarding the existing elevation of the catch basin invert outlet that drains into the small pond at the low point midway on the pond's western side as the outlet underwater during the survey of the property and provide depiction of related cross culvert on permanent sites. This is just a, a, a paperwork on the plan. Yes. All right, condition relative to possible blasting. Now, they, 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 I don't recall them. I know it was under discussion, but did they say they were going to blast? They said they, like at the last hearing, September yeah. 7th, they said they don't anticipate blasting. Okay. This was so should the need for blasting be anticipated, IWWC minor modification permit application be filed, and a 1,500-foot pre-blast survey should be conducted to assure any blasting damage will be corrected. Number four, condition relative to revised revisions regarding previous requested information and or admissions in the revised construction sequence document. So you, you just had them add some cleanup, uh, some words? Yes, because it came in, I didn't have time. And this is, this is just paperwork stuff. Correct. They would have revised it. They had to, another day to revise it, but there just wasn't time. Okay. Now, where's the rest of the... The, uh, the other ones, the one through 11, I've got a copy of he here in my hand if you need it, is on September 7th, Environmental Planners Report. Seven, I got 14. Here's seven. Are your seven? Sure. I probably got a seven around here somewhere. Do you want a copy? I have an extra copy, Chairman. Yeah, why don't you bring up? Starting here with one. The um if the condition is just a final revision of documents, I'm not, we're not going to get involved in the, the, what the revision is, unless it's something technical. If it's just a matter of uh, um, that's not one of them. That, not, number one is not one of them. But I mean, if it's just uh, crossing this word out and changing the other word, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Oh. But this we is... Conditions regarding final revised site plan set and final revised documents. Final revised site plan set and final revised documents. Final re uh, revised site plan set documents 
shall be submitted within 90 days of the permit to be reviewed by the town planner, environmental planner. Additions, additional changes to the site plan said agreed to precedent and submitted to the August 10th, uh, 2022 site plan submittal. And before the close of the hearing, additional changes to various application documents agreed to before or at the hearing shall be addressed in the final revised site plan. Go ahead. I did have a revision to this one at the end. What do you mean? It's number one, you've got to change this? Yes, because when I wrote it, we were going to, the hearing was going to close on September 7. So I just have to give you some more words to bring it to the present at the end. Well, at the end of this, it talks about September 7th, public hearing. It's right. going to be September 14th? No, no, we're just going to leave that. I, I suggest just leaving that and write, doing where it ends seven, September 7th, public hearing, comma. And I, I would suggest adding, and other revisions and information that the applicant submitted and also agreed to up to the close of the hearing, September 14 at 5 o'clock. Okay, so there was some slight modification there. Do you want me to repeat that? Um, no. Commissioner Phillips, would you like me to repeat that? Yeah, okay. So it, it ends September 7th, public hearing, comma, and other revisions and information that the applicant submitted and also agreed to up to the close of the hearing on September 14 at 5 o'clock. I, I, I also, did you, did, you, did you get that? Is that good? Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I also wanted to reiterate something about this because I was chatting with the applicant uh, yesterday or the day, the day before, and um, actually it was a comment about the water division, and I said, they said, you added something about the water division turbidity, and I said, no, 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 no. So what, what I want to reiterate is, in this number one, it says, and it says comments from the water division and, and engineering is all fold, folded in. When the water division, they over the summer, they sent, oh, maybe four sets of comments. In there, at the end of all of them, they say, and please have this, we are requesting that you include this as conditions of approval. So, and same with the town engineer. She says that, or her last line in hers. So. That's all folded in. In other words, we don't want to go through all those conditions of approval. There are like 37 of them for water division. And engineering has about, I don't know, 15. So they're assumed. So, so that's folded in. When, we, when it says in here, and comments from the water division, that includes their conditions of approval. That is, the, that is their comments are their conditions of approval. Okay, going on number two. Conditions regarding possible changes proposed to plan or to application documents after significant impact permit approval. Changes by P and Z, I mean, that's... Uh, I'm required by P and Z. Regarding possible changes to the approved site plan set to or set site plan set or to any documents associated with this permit that may need to be made in order to comply with the required changes relative to the P&Z site plan approval. It is understood that before those changes are incorporated into the IWWC final plan, they will be subject to environment plan alerts review to determine if the review by the IWWC may be needed before accepted as updates to the plan or if future IWWC permitting may need to be obtained. See bulleted item below for permit application categories that may apply. Changes other than those required by PNC. With the exception of changes required by PNC associated with the original PNC approval as per above bulleted item, any proposed changes to the approved site plan set to any of the approved documents associated with the application on file or to the terms or conditions of this permit will be, will require submittal of an IWWC application 
under one of the following categories per Section 19 application fees. IWWC regulations, permit modification, not minor revisions, minor plan revisions within scope of original permit, modification of specific terms or condition to pros as part of the permit, or administration approval request with appearance before IWWC accordingly. Conditions to be met before any, any alteration of site occurs. Bonding. I think we can put in there, this was a million two? Yes. That came in on, from the town engineer. It was finalized with the applicant on S September okay, a 14th. A bond in the amount of a million, a million two hundred thousand dollars um, uh, which shall be posted prior to the commitments of any site work activity associated with this permit on any portion of the property. Draft, do, draft bond documents to be submitted by permittee two weeks prior to anticipated commencement of any activity on the site to allow time for town review and approval of same. Independent erosion control implement monitor. Under the authority of section 14-2, the town shall and retain an independent erosion control implementation monitor. monitor. Permit E shall cover reasonable and necessity expenses of the monitor during the duration of the permit. Permit work. work including completion of site stability tasks as per IWWC's approved scope of work. Copy attached. Permit E shall otherwise have no rule in the selection of the monitor of the town administrator of the monitor's work. Monitor will forward written reports as agreed to the town, i.e. municipal network comprising of environmental planner, town planner, town engineer, water division, building official, and to the permit need, the site manager, and the permit needs design and designated engineering firm. Dam certification. Dam hazard rating and copy required periodic updates to emergency action plan due in 2020 per DEEP requirements to be submitted to environmental planner before the start of construction. Monitoring protocols for the box turtle protection plan. Monitoring protocols of the box turtle protection plan are to be scheduled to commence immediately prior to any scheduled clearing activities under the supervision of the site environmental monitor. Activity limits. Any activity beyond the limits of the, of the development and the silt fence installation is prohibited for the duration the site redevelopment project. Town pre-construction meeting. A town pre-construction meeting will be held with the town prior to the commitments of any work activity associated with this permit anywhere on the property to review all permit requirements, including DEEP general stormwater permits obtained for the redevelopment project. The town expectations for the performance and to establish a contact network. Attendees to include permittee, permittee's professional engineering firm, project engineer, permittee site project manager, permittee site construction manager, manager, permittee's responsible party for erosion control, individual identified on the DEEP stormwater general permit issue, permittee's attorney and the representative of the town of Walling, town engineer, town planner, environmental planner, water sewer, senior engineer, building official, independent erosion control, Implementation Monitor and the IWWC Chairman. So it lays down the requirements of, of uh, monitoring the, the project and the, and the construction. Conditions to be met before commitments of demolition phase of the plan. Wetland flagging. Wetland flagging completed in 2018 shall be field reviewed and reflagged as may be needed prox proximal to the proposed demol demolition alteration development areas prior to the commitments of any work activity on site. Flocculent use. Permittee shall use industrial professional regarding appropriate use of flocculants on the site tailored to the different application, grade and soil type. Determinations relative to the respective use of the different soil types and different grades in the respective location, i.e. location of temporary sediment traps shall be completed before commitments of, or alteration of any soils on site respective vicinity, in that vi respective vicinity. 
erosion control plan and construction site contingency plan for erosion control and emergency spill. Copy of the final approved erosion control plan and copy of the construction site contingency plan for erosion control and emergency spills document final, final revision version to be kept on site by project site construction manager and project site manager at all times with two copies in the main construction site trailer for reference. ENS control material supply storage containers. Two ENS control supply storage containers are to be installed at onset of site preparation. Containers are to be kept fully stocked at all times with routine ENS control materials and with the materials specific, specified in the approved construction site contingency plan for erosion control and emergency spills. Documented as revised in the event of large storm or hazardous events. Materials shall be restocked ASAP upon use of the product. Spill signage. Signage indicating DEEP emergency spill report contact number and Wallingford Water Drinking Water Supply Watershed shall be displayed prominently on outside of all site trailers, erosion control storage trailers. Monitoring in quiet period. Should there be a hiatus in site activity on any portion of the site to be developed between the demolition phase and phase one of the construction phase, be it regarding weather conditions, change in plans, or change in scheduling regarding weather conditions or change plans, disturbed areas must be stabilized as in required in the approved plans to be satisfactory to the monitor and the monitoring for adequate of erosion control measures by the monitor and the permittee responsible party for erosion control is to continue throughout any quiet period. Conditions to be met before commencements of construction stability phase, monitoring and quiet periods. Should there be a hiatus in site activity on any portion of the site to be developed at any point during the construction stability phase, be it regarding weather conditions, change in plans or scheduling, disturbed areas must be stabilized as is required by the approved plans to be satisfactory of the monitor and the monitoring for the adequate of erosion control measures by the monitor and the permittee responsible party for erosion control is, is to continue throughout the quiet period. Condition, condition for turbidity. Per, permittee shall use best practical technologies to minimize, minimize the potential for the increased turbidity in the muddy river. During the demolition phase, construction phase, and stabilization phase, the permittee shall regularly monitor the turbidity of the muddy river to ensure the storm water runoff from the site does not cause significant increase in turbidity in the river. If turbidity levels in the river downstream at the end of the site shows significant increase in turbidity as compared to the temporary measures in the river at the upstream end of the site, the permittee shall immediately furnish and install addition erosion and sediment controls necessary to reduce turbidity. Condition regarding box turtle protection. Natural Di Diversified Database Final Response Letter. The anticipated final response letter from DEEP Natural Diversity Database shall be submitted to the Environmental Planner prior to the scheduled commitments of the clearing work. Box turtle protection plan implemented overseen by site environment environmental monitor. Site environmental monitor, David, Davidson Environmental LLC or other qualified firm shall oversee full Im implementation of the plan protection protocols either by the contractor as it applies or and or by the site environmental monitor addressing isolated measures of use of, of appropriate erosion control products and education of the contractor regarding specific protocols for the turtle protection on site. Monitoring protocols are to commence immediately prior to scheduled clearing activities. Site environmental monitor to co conduct periodic inspections of all silt fencing, installation generally on a bi-weekly basis or more frequently if the site warrants it. Site environmental monitor to submit reports regarding any observation of bock turtle on the site over the course of the clearing, demolition, construction, and site stability phases. Two, Connecticut DEEP, NDDB, with a copy submitted to environmental planner. 
addition regarding IWWC plaques. IWWC plaques signage will be installed at 100 foot intervals at the boundary of the approved upland review area. Area encroachment limit to notify primarily property management personnel to the regulated limit of routine activity. Plaques are provided by the town at no charge. Condition related to required periodic reporting post completion of development. Reporting regarding maintenance of stormwater management facilities. Required maintenance of all stormwater management facilities on the property shall be conducted per stipulation scheduled monthly, quarterly, annually, as provided for the final operation, silt operation and maintenance plan. An annual maintenance report relative to all stormwater management facilities on the water on the property detailing compliance with the maintenance activity protocols and schedules and documentation of identification and remediation of issues shall be submitted to the town by December 31st of any given year. Uh, conditions regarding dewatering area. Dewatering areas with associated erosion control protection to be depicted on the final plans. Areas where wet sediment material from the temporary sediment traps is to be disposed as, as needed, to be deposited as needed periodically during construction phase to provide adequate storage area in the traps. And areas where are, areas are located that can be utilized as needed as a protect, proactive contingency measure should have a large storm, should a large storm be forecast. 11, condition regarding basin outlet control structure located in elevation. Discrepancy in location and elevation of the outlet control structure is depicted in plan phases, uh, depicted in different part, plan phases and in detailed drawing to be revised accordingly and finding plans to be submitted. I think you picked up that pipe elevation in one of the other uh, conditions or uh, comments. You, oh, I guess you already read uh, my suggested conditions 12, 13, and 14, yeah. 15. You already read them. So they're okay. started. All right. So I'm glad to see that the majority of the, the, the conditions of approval are kind of a housekeeping uh, uh, paperwork notifying, no keeping us informed. And everything. All right. Well, now, here comes the, uh, after all the, the three months or the three meetings and all the work we've done, it comes down to the, does the commissioners have any questions that Aaron can answer? I mean, it's, it's really not questions for the applicant, but questions about the application. Did the applicant um, agree to all these conditions that you just read? You know something, that's a good, good question. I think Aaron must have sent this, uh, that notice to them. Uh, hold on, let me see. Um, Yes, it was sent to the attorney. I'd have to check and see if he got it and sent it on to everybody. Um, well, they're worthless without some response from the applicant. Yeah, except, except I did talk to the law department today. Tonight, you can, you, the commission can add some more conditions of approval. That's up to the, we were doing that as a courtesy, she explained to me. When, the, when we, we offered these to the, the applicant saw them, mostly before you saw them, most of the time, these conditions of approval. And that's a courtesy um, thing. She's, tonight, you can add conditions that they even haven't heard of. So she, so that's fine. Um, I do believe I sent this to Attorney Sanaviva last night. I'm not sure, frankly, he'd have to tell, tell you when I sent it. I think seven o'clock last night I sent it, actually. So, um, and, but they're, I'm sure that, I assume they have no problem with them, they're minor. Um, and you can add more conditions. It's not a matter of adding more, Aaron. It's a matter of they agree to accept these conditions of, of approval. 
Okay, how can we I'm... make how can we make a motion for conditions of approval what they're looking at what you just gave them and they're not going to agree to it because you're sort of the boss here in this scenario you're going to either approve this or deny this and you are allowed to slap various conditions on it um, we do it as a courtesy more Nick to make things go smoothly with the with different applicants you know um, or if we have to, if, if something is problematic, let's say I propose something that is actually problematic. Well, okay. In, the, in this, I haven't heard any, any, any um, negative response from the applicant as, as regarding these conditions. The new ones, the ones that went out last night. The four that went out last night. And yes, as far as the other ones go, the one through 11, yes, they were on board with them a long time ago. And do you have anything in corresponding with them that they agree to do this? They accept these? No. I take it, if I don't hear any negative comments, I take it as acceptance? Well, except they, they couldn't really give you any comments back on this. Well, I was chatting with Attorney Senaviva earlier Today, I think I'm, I'm losing track, but you, Mr. Chairman, you are allowed to ask, I, the law department said you're allowed to ask the um, applicant a pointed question if you'd like, or a particular question. The if you'd like. They, like, such as Some one, of us were getting mixed signals out. You can, you can't, you can, you can. You can. Anyway. But I think what she's saying, if they don't want to agree to it, they can Forget about taking a permit if they don't want to agree to the conditions of approval. Right. This a project of this magnitude should have things in writing, not a shake of a head or a phone call at seven o'clock on a Tuesday night. If we, if you, the commission approves this tonight with these uh, 15 conditions of approval, that's it. Now we have over the years. I, I, I remember two times. A permit, permittee came back and said, hey, number eight, I need you to revise that. So I made them apply, and they came in, and they wanted to revise the terms of their permit. And the commission considered it. I can't remember how it turned out, but I think it, they did revise it. They said, okay, okay, we understand, or that no longer applies, or three years has tra transpired, fine. And they took it away. That happened twice, I remember. So they do have the opportunity to come in later on and say, hey, number 14, we're not going to do that, or whatever. We don't want to do that. And then they apply. That's, there is a fee schedule for that. They can apply to change the terms of their permit. All right, uh, Debbie. So the length of the project would be about 18 months. Could you repeat that? The length of the project is about 18 months. They've told me 12 to 18 months. Oh, 18 months. Of course, they wanted to get it done as quick as possible. It's right benefit to them. So that's just a large window for something to happen weather-wise. Yes. I and then in, in, in your document on the construction phases, how much is actually going to be open at a time? I didn't see any acreage how much is going to be open at a time and worked on? Well, we, the staff pressed on that, OK? Mm -hmm. Different staff people pressed on that. Finally, the town engineer did a calculation herself, and she came up with 40 acres, roughly. Um, but the reason the applicant didn't want to pin themselves down to a number, they explained it to me. I said, come mm -hmm. on, just give me a number. It's around 40, right? Is because it's moving. It's constantly moving. Cut, fill, cut, fill, cut, fill. So. It, it, it's not 40 acres, it might be a snapshot one day, but it, it keeps on changing. Maybe it's, at the beginning, it's only going to be five acres, right? Then they keep, then maybe 10 acres. Then maybe they stabilize. They said this to me. Then they stabilize that section. Then they move on to another section. So they, they couldn't pin themselves down to a number. Plus, it, it's something about the, the um, contractor, whoever the site contractor is, they're going to do it a little differently. So that was why we don't have a figure. But what the town engineer did, she took the limit of disturbance area all around the, where they're proposing the building, the parking, and, and she figured that, and that was 40 acres. Okay. 
Please. I thought we did have a, a figure of uh, opening up at each time. It's well, the steps. It was, was it in the construction sequence that we got September 14th? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I could go dig it up. Okay. All right. Jeff? Nothing at this point. Mike? No questions. Well, I think uh, I don't know where the other, where to go, Aaron, other than uh, to entertain a motion to approve or deny. We don't have to vote on uh, significant activity. Correct. Um. We can't table this for another stretch. Oh, thank you for mentioning that. Actually, I was talking to Attorney Senaviva today, um, thinking about that, thinking about do we need to give a little bit more time to all these, um, you know, tonight's memorandum, essentially, tonight's environmental planner's report and how you want to answer, how each commissioner is going to address that. Um, if commissioners do want to take more time, if they feel they're being, they, they need more time to come up with a, a response, you know, a, an answer, a, uh, about the feasible and prudent, um, then there is actually 35 days. Once a public hearing closes, you have 35 days by statute. Well, the public hearing closed September 14th. So this afternoon, Attorney Senevieve and I counted the days. And that, we agreed it brings you to October 19. That's a Wednesday night. So if you want to set a special meeting, it would have to be a special meeting, set for October 19, or next Wednesday, um, you can. We got 35 days to play with, and that's 35 brings us to October 19. Commissioners, would you like more time, or are you ready to vote tonight? Mike? I'm ready. Jeff? I'm ready. Deb? I'm ready. I only have one question for the applicant. It's pretty obvious, Aaron, if you look at this uh, little sketch they gave us, blue, green, and red, um, it looks like they only used half the lot. I don't recall hearing anything about the other half that's... Uh, it's existing previous area, it's going to remain, they're not going to take it out. So when do they start the construction on that half of the acreage here? Okay, they don't have any proposal that's come in, but they are, we've talked about this at staff conferences with them. They are fully, they, they were very open about it. They, they have the right to come back and subdivide at any time. They have the right to come back and propose another facility for the northern part of this property as one property at any time. Um, and it just something that the town planner also told me he, that, you know, this is in front of planning and zoning right now, that the, under this proposal in front of planning and zoning, the, uh, they have an emergency access. Is, they're gonna, it's, part of their, it's part of their application to go out to uh, Carpenter Lane. That's already exists. That access exists, as you know. It's gravel, I think, for the, the last stretch of it is gravel, goes out to Carpenter Lane. That's an emergency access, because this is a big building. You want an emergency route out should something happen. So um, I, I just threw that in. That's kind of an aside. But as far as maintenance, Nick, in answer to your question, I think I said this before, we folded that into the stormwater maintenance management plan that they have to maintain that northern parking area that's just sitting there with weeds growing through it. They have to maintain it because we don't know what kind of erosion might be going off into the wetlands in the woods. No one's looking at it. So that's part of the maintenance. Okay. I'm, so I'm, just because they're not developing the northern part, they still have to maintain it. I don't think this question was maintenance. It was whether it's going to be figured into development. but. Uh, this is what I was concerned about last time. How was that paved impervious surface going to be factored in on either the next application or this application? And because it wasn't in this application, were the calculations in this application? So that's kind of what started the conversation last uh, meeting. And uh, Aaron said about it, and we had a couple more uh, discussions to refine what I was thinking, and she produced 
a report that uh, was very, very complete and very detailed on the amount of impervious surface of each of the three applications that we've seen. And the numbers and the, the calculations all included that impervious surface of that parking lot, which was, I was pleased, because they were, they were talking about this project was so much less impervious surface than the previous one, I wanted to be sure where that parking lot was. That, if I may, that was uh, an environmental planner's report dated September 14. It's page, pages four through seven or something. Yeah, subdivision options. It described options. it pretty well. I'm sorry? It described it pretty well. Oh, thank you. Subdivision options, comparisons of disturbance area. It goes on for about three pages. And well, you had a graph, I think, of the, of the last page or in one of the pages. Right. To, to, actually, you got that tonight I gave it to the commission. That colored thing, the colored handout I gave you tonight, it, that was supposed to be attached to the September 14th um, document. This, this one, this one you got tonight, okay? That was supposed to be attached to the December, September 14th document. It's not from the applicant, it's, it's me going into old documents and putting together these three maps. I mean, BL companies generated these, but I put them together for the purposes of that to explain about the subdivision and the different impervious surface areas and so on. So, so when we vote tonight, we're not supposed to take consideration of the other, the other half of this property is for future development. Yes. Easy answer is yes. They have to maintain the, the pond, that, wait, the large pond and the dam. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All that. Aaron, whoa, whoa. Um, we had the, the, we're not, we're not, they're, in Aaron's report, with the discussion of everybody, they don't feel there can be any future development on the north side of the property without a wetland permit. That was the other half of the conversation. So they would be back here again. The only thing if we vote on tonight is basically what you see in the green and the blue. I would, th th there might be an exception to that. It's, if, if there's something little for instance, like a helipad or a cell tower that's little, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of room, maybe there wouldn't be a need for a wetland permit. Well, if they got a helipad, they'd probably land it on the parking lot that's already paved. Yeah, they don't need one. They probably already have that helipad there. Did they rip it out? I'm not sure, but... Answer the... Yeah, I'm just, I'm not sitting here as a dummy looking at this print that she gave us tonight because I see exactly what's happening. They wanted $2 million in the beginning, they downsized to $1 million. And there's, there's room for the other million up here. And I'm not saying about wetlands permits because they'll, they'll agree on the wetlands permit. But we all have concern about they're going to just wipe this. They're just going to do what they want here. And that's just, that's what's going to happen. You know, if you own this piece of property, would you leave this piece undeveloped? No, not forever. No. So I wonder if but the plans are already in the making. That's not, I'm not, that's fine. No, I'm, I've said enough. There's, well, there's always these issues that, that come up. And yes, there is going to be uh, more activity. I can't see that why there wouldn't be more activity on the site. But we have one in front of us now to deal with. I just wanted to be sure that the calculations, we weren't being uh, covered with the calculations. Okay. So I think the consensus is we can vote on this application tonight, on this public hearing. Aaron pointed out to, to uh, both the, the way you vote, explained why you voted, which way you voted. And uh, so the, the uh, record states that. So I'll entertain a motion to approve or deny this application. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that application A22-5.15 Research Parkway, Wallet 5 Research Parkway, Wallingford LLC be approved with the conditions of approval, 11 of them that are in the 
environmental planners report of September 7th. And number one has the correction that the revisions and information that the applicant agreed to and submitted up to the close of the public hearing at 5 p.m. on September 14th. And the four conditions of approval that were outlined in the environmental planners report of October 4th, 2022. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and, and, uh, and second. Is there uh, any other discussion? Any further discussion? I'm going to comment just to add the 1.2 million. Is that that's not in actually in there? In the bond. And, and number condition number three that the bond would be 1.2 million. There's no other comments. I'll call for a vote. Mike? Yes. I do not believe a feasible or prudent alternative exists. Jeff? Yes. In consideration of facts and circumstances set forth, I believe that a feasible and prudent alternative does not exist. Debbie? Yes. I believe that they've explored every possible feasible and prudent alternative, and they're does not exist one, and that they have addressed all our concerns about the water conditions and the impact to the wetlands and our water supply. Uh, I'm going to vote yes to the, in that there's no prudent and alternative measures that they can um, in place. I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that, Nick? No. Voted yes because of uh, there's no prudent and feasible alternatives to the, to the plan. Okay. Then I have a question for you once Mr. Vitelli votes. Okay. My vote is yes also. Uh, the feasible and prudent, I mean, we explored them at the, at the, during the hearing, and there probably could probably be something that uh, would be prudent, but it wouldn't be feasible. So I, I think we've covered the prudent and feasible. They've answered, staff has answered my concern about future development on the site, and how that fits into the program. I think we've done, if, if there was something else we could have asked for, I think that, that we should have. But I think that we, we have explored, and the town has explored all avenues of uh, options and improvements to, to uh, develop this site respectively and uh, environmentally sound. So the vote is yes. Nick, you got a question? Yes, Aaron, when do we start uh, making, uh, decide, doing votes and decisions without a, a stamped engineered print with an application? I remember in my junior years, Mr. Hellman ripped into me because we had a set of prints in front of us and they weren't stamped or certified. Now, this application, do you have stamped and certified prints? Yes uh, or no? Frankly, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I, I agree with you, Nick. We used to get that, and we used to at, require that and ask for it. It was a big deal. Is it stamped? I don't know. I, I, I'll look into that for you. I, re, I remember this used to be a thing, but I will... What about the 11 conditions that, that we just agreed upon tonight that they haven't said yes, they can walk out there and s s say they're not going to approve of them now? I'm just, something doesn't fit here with what we're doing. A project of this magnitude should have, we should have things in writing. That that's the, a stamp. Is, it's not raised. I mean, this is a cop, photocopy. This is that the print they're going to use out there in the field? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, yes. No? This is a shrunk down version of the, the larger site plan. Yes. Okay. So the 11 ads tonight, the other 11 or 15 things you yeah. added tonight, they're not on that print yet. Correct. What I do with that is I take them and I put them into, put them into the permit that's going to, the permit letter, notice of decision that's going to be issued. And it's issued, it's the official permit document. That's their permit. The notice of decision letter is their permit. And then 
they have, the first thing they have to do is number one, is that condition number one, get in all those corrections on a finalized set of plans, finalized documents, I have to go through with a fine tooth comb, and then we, we start the process. We have, what the first, then the second thing, we, we, the town has to, or right away, the town will be advertising, we have to put it out to a bid for that independent erosion control site monitor. That'll take two months. We got to interview different firms that are going to respond to that bid. That's, that's the next step. Well, actually, I misspoke. Planning and zoning has to approve this. Then we go on with that if they approve it. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. Application A228.1, uh, 158 Mansion Road. Are they here tonight? Good evening. Yes, sir. My name is Wayne Ritzy. I'm the owner of 158 Mansion Road. Okay. Okay, Aaron, what's going on here? Okay. Well, um, the Environmental Planners Report dated September 30th. You received Friday night. And I did meet with the applicant Monday because I called him up, uh, I guess, Friday night. I called him and said, hey, you know, we got to sit down and talk about your application. So he came in Monday and we sat down for about an hour and talked about it because this, this is your, I can see you're not gonna prove this tonight. This got a little bit of problems we gotta iron out and, and it's also not fixed in stone. The applicant said he wants to change the design a little bit. I don't, I said in my report, I hope you guys can get out there and look, you know, independently or we can do a site walk if you want as a commission, but it's, it's got a steep, bank down to a stream, and I'm still at this point not clear if Mr. Rizdi wants to take down trees for to put in a retaining wall for his new proposed detached three-car garage. He did go to ZBA. He got, he got two variances for, it's, it's a funny lot, it's kind of triangular, so he had to get two setback variances, and he got a special exception for the size of the three-car garage, because here he has a three-car garage under the house. I think that's correct. And so uh, maybe there it is. OK, but you, you say that there's more revisions than, than you are aware of? Well, yes, on Monday, I, um, apparently uh, we're not sure where the, we want the retaining wall to wrap around. Who, who's not sure? The, the applicant was okay. thinking he might want to change that retaining wall. He might want to shift the building, and I said, I said, well, he, go, he wanted to hear from the commission. In other words, if you guys want him to shift the building, he'll shift the building. If you want him to, to do something different, he's going to consider that. He's kind of locked in with the setbacks, but he, there's a little bit of play because he wants an approval, of course. So, Well, an easy answer is to make a two-bay garage. That would solve the problem. You know, then we could pull it back away from the slope, and the retaining wall wouldn't be an issue. But how, how high is the retaining wall? Six. Six feet. Uh, well, where are we in relation to Upland Review area? Uh, are, we, are we in the Upland? Yes. Area? Yes. Yes, we're 18 feet from the wetland, I believe. I put it, I put it in the report. Um, I think it did. He has it on his survey. He, he submitted a survey. Yeah, 18 and a half feet from the wetland flag. 
That's the structure. I'm not real sure exactly how close that retaining wall is. So it's 18 and a half feet from the wetlands, up, but there's a steep slope in between. Well, with the building structure there, it's uh, what what uh, what negative impact is that going to have on wetlands? Um, mostly in the construction, you know, the act of constructing it, and then it's very. It's that, maybe, I don't know what kind of soil it is, but dry, maybe it's fill soil. It's very crumbly. It's very erosive on that slope. You know, there's little patches of erosion. So it's not the best, you don't want to cut into it. You know, I mean, it's doable. If, it, it, it's, if it's well done, you could do it. You got, just got to watch it. You don't want to start erosion that's not going to stop. That's all. I think a lot, a lot's going to depend on your successes on the contractor you hire. Also, the, the roots of the trees come out to the drip line, so, you know, you don't want to get too close to those trees unless you don't mind losing them. Um, the owner told me he lost a lot of trees with a microburst. He already cleaned up a lot. You know, he lost a lot of trees. It just May 2018. Well, if it's if it's done correctly, I, I don't particularly have a problem with it. You're talking about though you're 18 feet. You're talking about uh, 32 feet into the upland review area. Then pretty much the whole garage is in the upland review area. Yes. Yes. Allie, got any comments? No. Nick? Is uh, the backyard where you want to put this? All virgin soil, or is it fill soil? What type of material is in there? Is Currently, sir. Currently, yes. I'm sorry, I don't know that answer. You my didn't my bring engineer just said one thing. Brian Nesteriak is my engineer from B&B. &B. He had a medical emergency on his way here tonight, so I apologize for him not being here. No, but you, you didn't bring any material. No, sir. Whatever God gave us. Deb? No, no questions. Jeff? No questions. Mike? No questions. Jimmy? Could I ask a question? Um, the person who's speaking, is he the applicant or someone else? I'm the applicant, Wayne Ritzy. Wayne Ritzy. Okay, thank you. I, I do want to add something, Mr. Chairman, that the, and the, the, we have to iron out. There's, uh, there was no wetland permit gotten for some work done behind the house. There's a uh, deck on piers and a 30-foot long retaining wall and a lot of fill back there. So, but there's no wetland permit for it. And the building, uh, the assessor said it was built in 2006. You know, so we already had the upland review here. So we have to deal with that issue. Um, we couldn't, the building department couldn't find any building permits for it, but they, we don't know, that might be misplaced. We're not sure about that. Uh, so that's, you can see. Chairman? Yeah, that's fine. Yes, sir. They purchased a house, has a deck on the back, taxed as an outbuilding on the deck. Now, Aaron's saying that I did all that work. I didn't do all that work. I bought the house with the deck and the patio. You, you gave me hang a on, Hang on a minute. I don't know why. Is your microphone on? Just pull the microphone closer to you. Yes. They're not recording us. There. there you go. Try again. Okay. So when I had purchased the house on Mansion Road, because it had a deck overlooking the stream and, and all of the above. So now I come and meet with her casually this past Monday, and she's telling me about something that happened in 2005 or 2006. Okay. Good for you. You gave me, the building department gave Frank, who built the house, the CO, Town of Wallingford taxed me $900 on these two flights of stairs. I guess that's considered an outbuilding here in town. So I want to address my garage. I really don't care about my back deck right now. I mean, if you want me to fix something, I'll try. I don't know how to begin, but I'll try. I, I, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not in the tax department, but I think any, anything other than the primary house is an outbuilding. I have the similar okay. situation. But I, I'm, I, I hear what you're saying. But it isn't so. So what do you? 
you're, you're try, you're, you want them to get a permit for the deck that's out there? Is that what you're saying? An Not so much for the deck. There's, I, I attached a photograph to the back of the report. There's a tremendous amount of fill, and these are things we approve. We, we ask people to come in for a permit. So I guess an after-the-fact permit might do it for that. I, I, well, a little confused. Where, when did you buy this, purchase this property? Way back then, Mr. Chairman. My question would be, if I've been taxed from day one. No, it, it's, it, you're going too far. You're, you're, this, is, this is more of bookkeeping on our side. Oh. It's not a big deal. It's, okay, all right. But when did you purchase the house? Middle five, middle of 205. Oh, fine. It, it, this is just a, a bookkeeping end on our system. Like I said, I was shocked when she was explaining it to me, I'm saying. Well, I, don't read into what's not there, okay? Uh, so you're saying, Aaron, that, that the material that's underneath the deck um, should have had a permit then? Well, and the, the deck, too. Yeah, but we don't permit the deck, like I said. You're talking about the fill you just said. Well, the piers for the deck. The piers are in the piers. The piers are the fill, the piers, yeah. The piers are like, I don't know, 15 feet high. <laughs> I don't know. We, 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 normally, we would get a permit to erect a deck on piers in the Upland well, Review at area. At the time it was built. In 2006, yeah. So I'm not even sure. That's you're talking 18 years ago. You're to try and get an after-the-fact permit now? Oh, so, all right. No, it's up to the commission. Okay. Um, Unless it's so just it's, it's, if this get, uh, the rest of the project gets a permit, if it's included or something. I don't know. The just commission the, will decide what they, what they think is right. Well, is this a violation, Aaron? Because we can't give them permission to put the garage in. But this is the violation. Well, that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. The, the Upland Review area went into effect in 1990. At that time, we called it a wetland buffer area. You know, but it's the same thing. The 50 feet went into effect in 1990, so this needed a wetland permit. That's all I'm saying, bringing it to your attention. So there's two things he's here for tonight, to get permission to do what he's already done and then to put the three-car garage in. Am I hearing that right or no? Well, okay, I, I, if he'll agree to that, yes, I don't, I don't know. The thing about the, the, the garage, let's, let's turn to the garage, we're not, you st Mr. Rizzi, you wanted to f fiddle with the retaining wall a little bit, wrap it around or something? Plans that were submitted by our engineer was requested from PZ um, Planning and Zoning um, Appeal. We had to show some type of structure where it's going on the land which has been laid out and approved by ZBA for the location of it. Now. She keeps asking me about the plans of the building. <laughs> I don't have a land to build on yet, so you people decide if I can build on it. Once, then I'll have my plans if to submitting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This was here to satisfy planning and zoning. Well, um, if I modify it, it will only be for the safety of the property. Okay. Well, your next step, you're, you either got to get a, a contractor or your engineer has got to decide where's the, how, where the, Where's the best place for this three bay, three car building, and what we need to put for a retaining wall? That's pretty much. Okay, it. so we've done that already. This is the location. I sure. You okay, that's all right. You guys seen it? Yep. All right, so your retaining wall is on that plan. Correct. But she indicates that you might want to modify where the retaining wall is. To get my approval, the answer would be no. To do it as a homeowner, so it's safer. Yes. Well, but I'm, I'm answering it two different ways, and I apologize. Well, no, you, I think, I don't know where you want to modify your retaining wall to, but I think we, we would rather have something safety and we'll say one foot closer to the uh, wetlands than just to give you this to build the permit. Correct. It's, gonna, it's pretty much going to be the same process either way. Unless you say you want to build a retaining wall five feet off the wetlands. No. I don't think that's what you're that's trying to do. That's not accurate. No. This garage is 30 feet above the wetlands. So I think you've, you've got to go back to your engineer and, and just put on the map where you prefer it to go. Okay. okay. This map here shows this retaining wall. After the retaining wall is the foundation. So, this so you're, you're happy with that map? This is where you want to put the retaining wall? 
I would be happy with the engineer's request. I'm not an engineer, sir. No, but where that what that map says? The answer would be yes. Okay, does she have that map? She does. All right. So the map that he has right now, he's content to have the retaining wall where it's on the map. Okay. Did you uh, um, did you get this map? I'm not I'm I don't have this map. Did anyone get the big map because Mr. Risty said he... Mr. Chairman, we had to submit 21 copies of this print. Oh, uh, I know, I know. Four trees. Hopefully you all have one. I think, should I, can I come up and pass it around? Might help or not, yeah, whatever. Uh, well, what, are you, what are you indicating? Me? Well, yeah. I, at this point, I, I did ask the owner to, if he would put stakes in the ground, because when I go out there, I don't know how many trees are going to be taken down for this project. Zero. Okay. I... It's little. It's kind of funny when you go out there. It's hard to orient. I did the best I could on this, uh, on these environmental planner photographs I took. Mr. Chairman, you want this copy? Sure. Bring it up, sir. I thought I. There's so much paper that goes on. This is retaining wall. Is it on that map, sir? Uh, I see it. I it's here. I can really tell where these uh, uh, let me ask why, why is your retaining wall got that dog leg in it or that, that bend? That's all you, you need? I'm embarrassed to tell you I don't know. Okay. The engineer put that in for a reason. Well, the retaining wall is understandable, but uh, you're, you're trying, you're if you've got your two, four, six, if you're six feet retaining wall there, what's going to hold up this corner of the building? Or is the building going to be the retaining wall or the foundation? The foundation will be up to the height of the retaining wall. So that's going to be all So you, you don't need a, an additional retaining wall on that corner of the building? I do not need it. Items. There's two items on there that are highlighted in yellow, upper left hand corner in the notes. There were two other items that Aaron uh, brought up on Monday. I just wanted to show you that they're, they are on the drawing. What are they? What are the two items? Two that you brought up about the pavement. Oh, okay, the pavement, yeah. That you want to extend the oh, pavement, right? I'm not extending any. Showing you the roses. I'm not extending any pavement because there isn't any there. This, you asked me if I'm going to pave in front of the garage, and on this note it says all paving will be done X, Y, and Z. So, do you want to pave in front of the garage, or not? Right now, half of it—it it looks like three quarters of it is grass. It's not paved in your drawing. That's right? correct. I understand that. Oh, but that's okay? You don't want to pave I, that section? No, ma'am. I penciled it in on the drawing like you asked me to. Oh, you just the handed them a new drawing. Yes, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So I highlighted two areas for you. I okay. penciled it in. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Absolutely. Um, okay. I don't know what the best solution or best uh, option for you is. Either uh, we, we act on this plan or we try to schedule some site investigation with your engineer and get a better handle on the, on the site. I don't know what, uh, what the issue uh, is. Aaron, if he's, going to, if he's going to operate off the plan that he has there or you have, What's, what is the issue? He does, he's not going to take down any trees. He's going to fit it in the, the area that's there. Oh, no. Well, I haven't seen the new drawing that he gave you tonight. Apparently, he, he altered something on that. I, you I, asked me to pencil it in, and I had done it. Oh, OK. So, so I'll, I'll look at that. But um, She questioned if I was paving in front of the garage doors, and the answer would be yes. 
Oh, I see. Okay, that's fine. The yellow marker. Yeah. So, but is this the same plan you? Oh, up here. It's the same plan you have. Well, except for where you penciled it in, yeah. So that's new. The pencil is new. What pencil in? Can I show you? Come on. Okay. Here's the existing driveway coming out of my house. Yes, sir. Comes up to the street. This is the new location. She said I didn't show it on the maps of where I was paving. Mm -hmm. She wow. said pencil it in, so I did. Obviously, I got to have I got to get into the garage, so I'm going to continue those dotted lines wow. she asked me to put down. So it's that whole triangle, or is it? Oh, here's the driveway. This is the driveway. So okay. Please the garage. This is 12 feet. Yeah. So this, this is 12 feet. Okay. This is nothing. So I'm, I'm filling in this corner. She yellowed it or orange it in or something like that. She said I didn't show the paving. The notes clearly state that we are doing the paving, and I penciled in as requested. Okay. So your retaining wall, so this is the structure. The retaining wall is here. Yes, sir. But you drop off significantly coming down here, correct? I so drop off 30 feet back oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so you drop off significantly in this corner here and this is 30 to 35 feet back to here okay okay I think the comments by what's the elevation this is about 30 feet here down to the water yeah but he's just indicating just I think right there's a it's about a four foot we're going to have about four foot uh, six foot of concrete exposed Yes, sir. I'm not an engineer, but I'm agreeing with anything. I'm assuming there's, that's a flat slab. And once again, we were land, not landlocked, but according to the ZBA, they drew the triangle where we could locate the building. So I took a sketch of the building, put it into that area, and she said, what are you building? I don't know what I'm doing. Where do you want me to put it? This is what the ZBA wants. And these trees would be re like retained. I have no trees being removed, sir. Okay. This was all cleared out when we had the, the, uh, the mega brace that went through Hamden. Okay. I cleared out a lot of trees that fell down here, like nine thousand dollars worth of trees I had to remove. Okay. Okay. I would suggest you tie the slab into the walls, though, with that kind of exposure up there. All right, Aaron. All right, Aaron, where are we now? I mean, the two lines that where it's going to be paved, that area, what else? Okay. What else is the So he's keeping his retaining wall like it's drawn. That's good. That's what he said. Right? Okay. So if you want to approve this on page three of my report, um, I'm sorry, page four, there's uh, three conditions of approval. Is he familiar with the conditions of approval? Well, I, I, we discussed it Monday. I gave him a copy of the report. Okay, number one is that he submits an afterthought application regarding the, the filling and the retaining wall and the deck off the back. Um, and, oh. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, these are things that he's doing on, it, Mr. RISD is clear. Clearing, doing things on the homeowners association property. That's what's on page four. That's he, the wet meadow where he said he took down all these trees after the microburst. That's not his property. It's the homeowners association open space property. Uh, that's really an issue for zoning, I think, to take up with that. So, uh, so what's the conditions of? Approval? Okay, the conditions. I know I put them in here. Let me find them. Um, It, well, I can tell you what they are if I didn't write them in, in there. I'm losing chance. Okay, what they are is I wanted to extend the swale in the back because the way it's, the roof water is just going to dump out on the top of this, on the top of the slope. The roof, the roof water from this structure is just going to dump out, and I know the way those soils are, they're erosive. It's going to carve a thing. 
So I suggested doing a swale, keep it just like he's drawn it, except where it meet where daylights to do a stone swale a little bit further down. You know, just take it down the slope just to protect the slope. That was one thing. Um, the other thing was to um, not, instead of using a silt fence, I mean, I'm glad that, that it shows a silt fence for protection, but I, that, that slope is so erosive, I would use a, uh, what they call a silt sock. You know what that is? Like a core log? log? It's called a clogged silt fence. Core yeah, log. I understand it well. No it's like that. a snake. <laughs> Minor. Full of mulch, and you know it well. stake it in. Okay. Then I thought that would do less damage to that slope. So those were the two things I was thinking of, and I thought I wrote them in here, and now I'm wondering where they are. Oh, here it is at the top of page three. I talk about the silk sock, and I talk about a stone line swale. There, it's at the top of page three. Um, I said concerns. So those two things, if you want to move forward with it, with it tonight, you, you can make those two things conditions of approval. Okay. Commissioners, are you ready to vote? Yes. I'll entertain a motion regarding this application. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that application A22-8.1, 158 Mansion Road, Wayne and Paulette Ritzy, uh, be declared not a significant impact activity. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Offer a vote. Mike? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Deb? Yes. Nick? Yes. Yes. Now I'll entertain a motion to approve or deny. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that application A22-8.1, 158 Mansion Road, Wayne and Paulette Ritzy, be approved with the two conditions listed in the Environmental Planner's Report of September 30th, 2022. They're located on page three, number one and number two, under concerns regarding proposed work. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made second. Any discussion? All for a vote. Mike? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Nick? Yes. Yes. Now it's set. Okay. Good luck. Uh, can I copy of that drawing? You, you can. You don't need it, do you, Aaron? It's the same one you have. Well, you can, you can deal with it. Well, if she, need, if she wants I it. I just want to take a peek at it. I just want to take a peek where you put the pencil in. Okay. Application A22, 8.2, 1730 Tuttle Avenue. James Learned. All right. I don't need a copy. It's okay. Here. I got Wait. it. Yeah. Okay, Aaron, what's going on? Pond okay. dredging and vegetation this, removal? This owner is on vacation right now and he requested, he said, is it okay if I represent it? I think it's easy enough I can represent his case for him. Um, so you got the environmental planners report, I trust. That went out in Friday, in, it was dated September 28th, but it went out in Friday night's packet and it had uh, photographs, okay. So this is a small pond on the edge of Tuttle Avenue. Nice piece of property. I was amazed at the environmental quality of this pond. Most of the ponds I see are covered in algae. This didn't have a spot of, of algae that, you, in other words, it wasn't what they call eutrophic. It wasn't, it is a very healthy pond. Even with, there were about 30 turtles in there. And I'm like, how is this pond so healthy? I don't, I don't know, but it's great. It didn't have invasive species. It didn't have any scummy algae. Um, it was just great. Anyway, so he, um, the owner wants to dredge. He has a little piece of equipment. He's going to do the work himself, and he just wants to dredge the, um, I believe it's the north end, which I show. He's not doing the whole pond. I, 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 he, I pinned him down as to the square feet, and... Um, Let's see, I have it in here. The pond is 170 by 60 by about 10 feet deep. He told me about 10 feet deep. I saw it when it was in drought, so it wasn't quite that big, you know. Um, let's see. And okay, so he wants to dredge an area approximately, it's down at the bottom of page one, probably approximately 30 feet by 20 feet 
down approximately 18 inches deep. That's all he wants to do. All right, so there's, he's got uh, conditions of approval? The conditions of approval are on the back, bottom page two, and the conditions are work to be conducted in the dry time of the year, which he wants totally because he doesn't want his equipment getting stuck, and then it won't be drippy when he gets out. The excavating material won't drip all over the place. And two erosion control measures are in place. I asked him to put hay bales across the driveway just to make sure that no, you know, dirt gets tracked out onto uh, or inadvertently spills down onto uh, Tullaf. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Well, is there any comments from the from the commission? Does he need a DEEP permit? No, no. because it's what doesn't he, doesn't it have to be approved by DEEP because it's a dredging of ponds? Not unless you know something I don't know. <laughs> All right, I I thought I read where DEEP was against having ponds dredged or dug out. We'd rather have them filled in. That's okay, fine. well, I've got to research that, but no, I, this, uh, does I... He have a, does he have an application before DEP? No, he does not. Okay. I don't, I hope it doesn't apply to such a minor maintenance activity. Okay, I just... I, it, I wonder if there's a size limit on that. I'll check, I'll look into it, Nick. I'll look into that. Well, if you're going to look into it, we can't vote on it tonight. Well, it's interesting, we have a... a Tonight you're going to get, you got it in the packet, the dredging of the pond at PNA, Polish National Alliance site, you know. Uh, and they don't have a DEP permit in on that, but I will look into that. This is, I, this could even honestly be called maintenance. It's, it's so little, I, it's not like a project, you know. That's my opinion. All right, then we'll, we'll call it maintenance. And you're going to check on the... If you call it required? maintenance, he doesn't need a permit. So I could give him his money back. He's not going to do it until next summer. We can postpone this a month if you want. We'll postpone it a month. We'll table okay. the application a month. And, Please, and Nick, I'll look into that that you brought up. Application A18 1.2801 North Colony Road, Pattonsbrook. I am the Walrus LLC. Okay, frankly, I didn't get time, as you might be able to imagine, to deal with that. I did go out to the site. I don't like the way it looks, but I haven't got time to write up the environmental planners report. It's, you know, very weedy, shall we say. It's, it's very unattractive, that's for sure. On it. But the commission's going to have to dis, you know, I'll do the report decide how far they want to push this Carter restoration project because frankly it's impossible. It is an impossible project to come out successfully. It, it, it would involve not how we imagine it. The way we imagined it, it's not going to happen. I felt that way when they, they presented it. And then uh, there was a big problem because the landscaper went in and took out all the, the little saplings and he thought he was doing a favor. Okay. Now, uh, a receipt of uh, A2291 approved administratively. Uh, it was just a removal of a small building at, behind uh, Walmart's. Uh, application A22 9.2 Quigley Road. This was cleaning up a fence line. Aaron recommended approval administratively. That was done administratively. That, yes, if I may say. So yes, that, that was administrative, but there's the other half of that application. Now the other half, and I did go out there and I met with the owner. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I w I'm gonna write a report next month denying it. You, you don't act on it tonight, you act on it next month. And you guys, I encourage you to go out there. He's very nice, and he wants just to clear it. He want, this is a very wet wetland. It's swampy back there, and he wants to clear it out. And I go, what do you mean clear it out? He wants to keep all the mature trees and take out all the bushes and the ferns and just you know have the trees. 
And so I go out there. It's a beautiful uh, wetland. There is no invasives. And I'm standing there, and I'm looking. There's no invasive plants. There's beautiful sweet pepper bush. And I explained to him, people pay money for this in garden stores. And you've got like 20 sweet pepper bush bushes growing naturally in the swamp. And I tried to encourage him not to pursue this. And I said, I don't think the Wetland Commission is going to let you do this, but it's worth a shot. You, so if, you, uh, if we want to do a site walk out there, or if people want to go on their own. OK. So, so this application will be actually a, a formal application of the uh, cleaning of the wetlands or the vegetation next month. Yes. Okay, and then North Plains, uh, Polish National Alliance, North Plains on, on uh, dredging the, the pond there. Now that, that came in Friday. All right. Uh, Roman's I, involved. I want to in move that. over. I want to move over to violations because you've got some some major violations that you've requested people to be here. Uh, I think the. Uh, uh, 67 Schoolhouse Road, Michelle and uh, Melican and Michael Gervais. You've got some, some removal of, of property and uh, or, or removal of trees and filling wetlands. And 69 also, Ma Matthew Luis, owner. They, they both have some areas of filling um, with a very undesirable product. Yes, there are, some of them are here tonight. Why don't you come on down? Come on down. Do they? Do we want them doing both together, sixty-nine and seventy-nine? Be because, because yeah, yeah. Because this situation is unfortunate for everybody involved. You want to have a seat? <laughs> Why don't you, put, girls, you want to go up in the mayor's chair? You want to go over sit in the mayor's chair where it says the mayor? understand that, that you unfortunately filled a large area in your backyards that uh, are uh, more than likely uh, dedicated wetlands and that's not good and what definitely was for me I'm the only one talking they're, they're beeping me for some reason. Um, so that's not good so the problem is because I mean who are, who are appearing okay yes could you state your name for the record, everybody at the table? Yeah. Michelle Gerace. Michael Gerace. Matthew Lewis. Gabrielle Varelli. This is my wife. We just got married. I'm going to change my name now. All right. So. And your last name, please. Sorry, Gabrielle. Varelli. V as in Victor, E R R I L L I. Okay, thank you. Um, if now, uh, Aaron, did we get involved in hiring a soil scientist? Yes and no. We didn't take him on board yet because this is Scott Stevens. I reached out to Scott Stevens, who you, you, some of you know. We've worked with him and his father, Ken Stevens, for years. Um, he said, hold up. He said, uh, don't call me right now. Not so fast. Just go out and get a lay of the land. He recommended a few soil scientists for the homeowners to hire. And the one that responded was Jim McManus. He's out of Newtown, I believe. Well, so Scott's idea, Scott Stevens' idea, was to go out there. We were all going to go out there together, but he says, no, no, no. It's a waste of my time right now. Have Jim McManus go out there, work with the homeowners, have him determine where the line is, or where he thinks the line is, the wetland line, and then Scott Stevens would go out and review with Jim in the field, because that's what these soil scientists like to do. They like to 
to um, compare notes in the field, you know, over here, no over here kind of thing. So he said, we'll do that. Okay, so Tuesday, we all met out there. Jim McManus, the wetland soil scientist, wetland science slash soil scientist, and his, his aide and uh, the homeowners met out there. It was raining and we, um, Jim was great. He kind of gave a little tutorial on soil science, science and he had his auger and he would dig around and he'd show us the difference in color of the soil, which was great because I'm sure the homeowners didn't get how do you tell where the line is. He explained all that to us. Um, he also um, was very good explaining, and I want to walk the commission through it a little bit. You got these maps in your, uh, or drawings in your packet on Friday, I hope. <laughs> I believe they went, yeah, they did go out in the packet. These were done by the um, engineering department. Okay, what I had them do, I had the engineering, because the homeowners, and they'll speak, they were like, what's going on here? We thought we could do this, because they were not aware of the 1978 wetland permit that was issued for a, something like a 30 lot subdivision called Wildwood Acres, issued by the state of Connecticut DEP. Because if you recall, the town of Wallingford, as, you, as some of you know, we're, we're sitting on the first commission, was not created until 1988. So from 72, when the Wetland Act was passed, to 1988, all this was under the administration of the DEP. So the developer did a map, and we found the original map in the files, and um, I had my engine, the engineering department print it out, blow it up, Blow the image up on the uh, Google, which is fun to see with the trees. You can actually see the trees and the shed and the grill out there. And then on the planimetric version, he t so the engineer, they took the 1978 wetland line and they superimposed it on this. Now, back in 1978, we didn't have the 50-foot reviewer. reviewer. That came in in 1990. Okay. So, but then... It was great having Jim McManus out there helping explain this. That was a line from 78 done by a soil scientist. We don't know the name of that soil scientist. And then the developer built the, all those houses. You know that Hartford wasn't down here looking at how the developers built the houses. So who knows what he did with that line, you know? And then that was 45 years ago which is, tr or something like that. So who knows how things change over 45 years, um, and so on. So in his, where I'm getting to is that this line, whether it's very interesting, it, it, it's not totally cast in stone. In other words, I, I bet the developer pushed that line when he's building the houses. I don't know how much. Well, it, it, the point is now, We've got to determine where the wetland line is, or the upland review, where, where, where this all fits. And if, it, if it's underneath the brick, the brick has got to go. That's the problem. I mean, I hope you understand, we did our due diligence. We called the town. We were told that we had no wetlands. We you called, called the town? called twice. Who'd you call? We called planning and zoning, and they told us that there's no wetlands listed. I said, okay, I'm just confirming. I said, because I'm get, having get work done. Get your microphone done. closer. Sorry. I said, okay, because I'm having work done. I said, I need to confirm there is no wetlands. And they said, there's nothing listed for 67 I, Schoolhouse Road. I can't believe with the fact that if you called planning and zoning or anywhere downtown with a full wetland office, they wouldn't have referred yeah, you to wetlands. That's the thing. They didn't direct me anywhere else either. Well, so that was, and we also found out recently that there's supposed to be something on our deed for our house that has information on wetlands, and we have a one-page deed, and that's it. Aaron mentioned something about that. We have oh, no that, for that either. That's not common back then, especially back then. And I'd, I'd like to just kind of chime in, too, because I'm a recent um, homeowner in Wallingford. Um, me and my wife bought our house in, in July. Is the of, microphone on? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm really loud, actually. <laughs> but we bought our house in uh, July of 2020. And um, 
I had actually called the town because I wanted GIS mapping of the property because Wallingford doesn't have an online system. And I said, hey, you know, and I actually asked them and I said, is there wetlands on the property? Mostly because I wasn't familiar with wetlands and I saw so much moss on the, in the backyard. But then, um, you know, with them telling me specifically that there was no wetlands, come to find out, I, I did my research, oh, moss can grow in any shaded area. And our house was owned by um, a former person that actually passed away from ALS. So there was a lot of overgrowth everywhere around the house. So to me, it was like, oh, that's why there's so much moss on the, on the grass. And we didn't have much grass in the backyard. Well, unfortunately, you, know, you cannot, unless you go downstairs and say, that person told me there's no wetlands. That isn't how it works. You, know, you say somebody in the town told you there was no wetlands. I find it hard to believe, especially when we have a full wetland department. Yeah, I mean, it seems a little, it's a little discouraging that they wouldn't refer to the wetland department if they didn't know. I mean, why would, you know, it's almost like I felt like they were kind of pushing me to say, oh yeah, buy the house. Why wouldn't you join Wallingford? There's no wetlands. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of upsetting. I, don't and I know I called the assessor's office because that's who sent me the GIS mapping. So I'm not sure if it's the same person that's there. I know well, it's a lady, but, you know, that's not, if well, that's not their determination, they shouldn't. That's right. GS, GS, uh, GIS mapping and the assessor, I don't even think they know what the word wetland is. Because you say, well, my property is only worth half because it's wetland. Oh, you know, that doesn't work. You shouldn't work. be giving information. That doesn't help. But anyway, <coughs> it's just a point. Can I just say something? Just the commission probably doesn't know. I do a lot of work behind the scenes that never comes to you, okay? I get about five calls a week on does, does, 32 Maple Lane have wetlands? Okay, this is like, and so does this, the different people in the office. They get these calls. So what my secretary would do if I wasn't there, she'd look on the database of our, or looking for a pass permit for 32 Maple Lane or whatever. You know, it's the way that people ask the question sometimes. Is there any, are there any wetlands on this property? And I would say, well, I don't know. Let me look in the, in the file. No, we have no past wetland applications or wetland violations on this address. I don't go out to, I, I say this to people, I don't go out and look, you know, I don't, unless I have a lot of time, which I haven't had lately, but sometimes I will go out and look, but I don't, it's not a practice to go out to look. And people, a lot of people say to me, well, wait a minute, I used to live in, you know, Darien or Fairfield or, or wherever, Glastonbury. They have every square inch, Rocky Hill, I heard the other day, Every square inch of the wetlands is done. They paid a well, company that's to go there, do it. Aaron, that, that doesn't help us tonight with the right. situation. I'm just saying that sometimes it's lost in translation. So do you think it's okay that they filled this thing? No, no, and it is in the deeds. It is in the deeds, and again, the deeds are thick. I'm sure at the closing, it's, it, you know, there's a lot of emotion at a closing and so on, that, they, that a lot of people don't read every page of their deeds. They go they're back, deep, deep 78. Best. We have a one-page deed. That's yeah. it. That's a quick claim. That's quick no. claims are one page. No. Nope. Nope. What I have is the warranty deed and there's nothing. It is one page and at the bottom there's only two subjects and it says something about you're subject to taxes, you're subject to different things. There's only two and that's it. There's nothing else on the war on the warranty deed at all. This I think what and I have a picture of it. I can I show think you. what Mrs. Gervais is referring to. Say, say it again. Gerace. is our last v. name. Sorry. No V. Um, referring to, I get this from other folks too, that's the document, a copy of the document to prove it was recorded by the attorney. You have to record it any closing yeah, within you, 10 days. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you driving at now? What are you trying to say? I'm just, that, I want to educate people on the TV that are watching. When your attorney but, records it, that's great. That's a one page document saying it was recorded. Yeah, it's so. not the 28-page declaration that, that is attached to these properties. That's all I'm saying. What 28-page? I've, I've got a pile of deeds that are only one page. Or unless yes, but this one actually has a lot of pages that the uh, folks... You have are, the original deed to this? Yes, yes, I do. And does it say it, there's wetlands on it? Yes, but have, that's before but, these folks bought it, but then they get, they're supposed to get copies of the declaration. And where did you get that, from the town clerk? From the, well, I didn't get the engineering department goes down, they do the digging, and they got it from the town clerks. Now, 
Now, that's from 1978, but you're supposed to get, I don't know, Schedule A or whatever it is, the attachment, you know. Maybe their closing attorney didn't give them the attachment. I don't know. Well, okay, maybe it didn't. But, but, but you've got a situation that you seem to, to um, people call up, do I have wetlands? And we're giving them incorrect information because it's not flagged. No, no, I always say, I, don't have, I can't go out there. I do not know if there's wetlands. We have no past history on it for this particular site. Well, how about everybody else in the office now? And then I often say, if you go out there, do your sneakers get wet? <laughs> you know, uh, in this case, apparently, Jim McManus found, you know, photographs, you know, aerial <laughs> photographs of skunk cabbage and such. So, but um, what he's referring to is the fact that we called the office and we were given information that was not correct. We're not saying we spoke with you. We're not right. saying no, we spoke with anybody in the office. We were given incorrect information because we never would have pursued any. We wouldn't have contacted a contractor to begin with to do any of this. But do you know which department you call? I called planning and zoning. And I'll just say I called GIS, but honestly, the wording that Aaron is saying that um, that there's no prior history of violations or anything with wetlands, or no not per se no records, but saying there's no violations sounds very familiar. So I very well might have spoken with Aaron, and she might have said that exact phrase to me, which inclined me to say, "All right, I'm going to purchase this property because there isn't any wetlands." I don't, know what, I don't know what to tell you. The, uh, um, you're going to have to get this, get some kind of, uh, are you going to get the wetlands flagged? That's the first step. Is you, are you, are you going to hire the wetland person to flag? Is that necessary to have our backyard or are we just going to take? If that's necessary to have a backyard, that's really what we're looking for. Okay. All right. Aaron, I think that you've got to get some involvement with the town attorney up here on this. If they're claiming they were told this, you've got to get a direction of some route here, some, some procedure. Our contractor stated that he also checked into it and there wasn't anything either. If they talk to the same person, what difference does it make at that point? Right, yeah. Everybody was wrong. And most contractors know when there's skunk cabbage and a few other things that it's a wetland. And is this a Wolverham situation? Uh, no one's mentioned anything about what wetland soil. Is this a Wolverham kind of environment? Uh, I haven't gotten a name from McManus, but I would say yes. Yeah, I would, I would imagine so too. And quite honestly, I don't think the vast majority of people would recognize a Wolverham soil as a wetland soil. You're in the woods. And there probably isn't skunk cabbage. There doesn't necessarily have to be. In fact, very often in a Wilbraham environment, there is no skunk cabbage. So how would you know that? And I think the other thing that was mentioned here that is salient to the whole conversation is the fact that maybe the right question was never asked to begin with. No one at fault here. And I don't blame anyone. And I do understand how people can get wrong information. I, I think the commission needs to look at this very carefully when we proceed and continue on this and be as lenient as possible and recognize what is the contamination in there. Is it a toxic thing or is it, <clears throat> let's say, a reconstituted uh, product of the base material that's underneath it? In other words, the clay brick that you are looking at in these pictures is a product of the <laughs> bedrock. It's, it's the clay layers that lay in between the sandstones that were mined and quarried and made into these bricks that are there. So it's not like it's a toxic thing put in. in. You don't want to do anything that would destroy the wetland, so yeah, I think you need to ask yourself, we need to, in view of this situation that is unfair, clearly unfair, but it exists. So you've got to deal with it, and I think leniency is a good thing to look at in light of the fact that there may not be a significant damage to a wetland, depending upon how much and how extensive this is. So I think the thing that needs to be done is what Chairman was pointing out. We, we have to have some concept of the boundary. Now, this line does give it 
but we don't know how accurate it is. And it's very unfortunate that uh, this information wasn't available. I understand it, though. So I, I would like to see, see us continue with this, but with in mind, what damage will be done? Yes, it's a violation, and I really hate to see that. But did you know? You asked. You did everything right, and unfortunately, information was insufficient to do what needed to be done. Uh, that's all I can say in recommendation for moving forward on this. Look at it, find out where those boundaries are, and, and with least harm to the applicants and least harm to the environment, I think something could be worked out with this. Yeah, appreciate it. Do we want to set a sidewalk? I'd be happy well, to. I, I'm sure that's going to be necessary, but. Uh, I think if you first got to find out where what uh, the town's legal opinion is. Okay, I am okay, but I am holding the deed, Mr. Luis's deed here, and it has it has the declaration document reference. It said subject to the declaration and restrictions dated August 21st, 1979, and here they are, and there it is. So. Well, you know, I, I'm going to tell you that I've seen plenty of attorneys that, that don't don't spend the time with the client yes. going over those things. Yes. Yeah, and I think Is this, in the sense of you know me getting reassurance from the town of Wallingford, if I saw my deed, you know, refer to this document for something, I would never be inclined to think, oh, it must be a wetlands. I mean, a deed could have anything on it, really, in a sense. And you know, an average person isn't going to be able to dissect it. That's what the. That's what I feel with the attorney's job. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I don't think they. You know, and most closings on real estate is done very, uh, very economically. And, and I've often said that there, there isn't enough money when you when attorneys are looking for two hundred, two fifty, three hundred an hour. They don't spend an hour with you at the closing, and they don't need to discuss what really goes on. The numbers don't. It. But it, it, Jim's got a good point. The lines, you don't know where the lines are. You don't want to spend the money for a soil scientist, but you want a backyard. Aaron's got maps that say that there are or deeds that say there is wetlands involvement, but we don't know. If you talk to planning and zoning, somebody in planning and zoning says, well, we don't have any information. You have a wetland. I'm not sure what that all means. I think that's where it's got to go. We got to figure. We got to figure out what it all means at this point before we start that. And then uh, Nick pointed out that there's plenty of maps that, that show the rubble and the, the material. Um, I mean photographs. Photographs. Yes. Photographs. Yeah. Photographs. Yeah. So, commissioners, any comments, commissioners? I'd just like to add that. Yeah, you kind of imply that you wouldn't have bought it if it had a wetland, if you knew it had a wetland. I'm going to tell you wetlands are a blessing. Um, I, I lived on Ridgeland Road for a long time, and I had a wetland directly behind my house. And it was incredible the amount of wildlife that came through. Like every day there was something new. I ended up putting a, a, a camera up in my bathroom on a tripod and used basically my house as a blind and took dozens and dozens of really incredible photographs of rare birds and wildlife. Um, it's really, I know it's, it seems like it's limiting because you don't have quite the big play yard, but it is such a beautiful thing to observe and to participate in when you can monitor the plants, animals, you know, uh, amphibians, everything that goes on in a wetland is just a fabulous learning experience. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not taking anything away from that at all. I mean, maybe taken out of context saying, you know, I, would, I wouldn't have bought the house, but I would have probably second guessed or, you know, at least give me some clear, clear view of where it, where it is and what kind of opportunities I'll still have in my backyard with ease versus, you know, not knowing. Right. Because if it's right up against my house, it, you know, that would really limit me. And honestly, I see your point in even saying, oh, there's no, been no, previous applications or violations on a property is kind of a non-answer. 
You know, and it, it does, it is misle in, in a way misleading when you're asking a question, do I have wetlands to, to get a, well, we don't have any record of anybody applying for something against the wetlands or being violated, so that's a non-answer. One of the issues, though, you must have suspected there might be wetlands or else you wouldn't have called the town. You're certainly aware of there's a, some kind of wetland regulation or else you wouldn't have called the town. Do I have wetlands? Right, like I stated, and to me it was mostly about the moss. Okay, so you So the moss on the be. floor, but from further research after the town, re, you know, had told me, I found that, all right, moss is just grown in acidic soils that don't have much light, and it made sense because of all the overgrown in the backyard. So that was my, that was my inclination. Well, what, what Aaron? Oh, I just want to say, Mr. Luis, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. He might not have done any damage to wetlands. I'm not sure Jim McManus would draw the line. Most of his, is in, his disturbance is in the Upland Review area. Um, very little bricks. There's some brick piles on Mr. Luis. That's, this, that's 69 uh, Schoolhouse Road. There's some, I think, five piles of bricks sitting there in the Upland Review area, but I think there's very few. He took down some trees and maybe pu pushed well, some dirt around, but very well, little, maybe nothing in the, up, in the wetlands. I'm not sure. Okay. But where are we going to go with this? You're going to talk to the town attorney, see what her, her opinion is about being that they're being advised that they had no wetlands. Okay. And then... Uh, uh, got to be some soil scientist that, to, yeah. if, if we were going to proceed, you would want somebody on your side to say, this is not a wetland, and we would want somebody to say, this is the wetland line. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the, where you're going to go. As and far as being able to keep the brick there, I don't know, without getting that line, you're not going to know without getting that line. And if it is determined that it is wetlands back there, can we do some kind of permit or proposal so we can keep part of it, so we can have at least Possibly. somewhat for them to play? And because we have a safety issue, and I have four police reports here of accidents just in front of our house. My daughter's t car got totaled sitting in front of our house. Across the street, their fence got taken out. Next door, the mailbox, another car. I can't let them play in the front yard. We've had cars drive up on our lawn. That's why we decided that we needed to do something in the backyard. My, we were gonna move, that was the thing, but we have, my elderly uh, parents live with us. They both have Parkinson's. And they want a backyard that they can see the kids play and everything like that too. And right now, the way the grade is, they fall off the patio completely. No wheelchairs, no walkers, nothing can go back there. So we want it for them, we want it for the kids. And we were going to move, but moving with two people that have Parkinson's, we've done it once. It's not an easy thing to do. So we decided to stay at the house. And we refinanced our house to do this. That's the other thing, too. Instead of moving, we refinanced so that we can pay the contractor to do this. Well, unfortunately, you started out with bad information. And it's been downhill ever since. So um, if you have any hope of keeping anything there, you're going to need a soil scientist. So that's something you guys ought to discuss and keep in touch with Aaron on. We'll table this out until next month. Okay. 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 So we're not going to do a site walk yet? We're going to wait? I, why don't you, why don't we wait till we hear from Janice and we'll schedule a site walk right. At the next meeting we'll schedule a site walk? Well, you're going to be the first uh, November. You still got enough time. You're going to be a quick, be an earlier one. So we'll schedule like no, at the November 2nd, okay. Something like the first week in November. And the other, the contractor that did the work is, is that, you're in a status quo limbo right now if this is regarding schoolhouse road Correct. until we get the thing resolved direction we'll go from there and okay. just just to add one thing because um on the violation it also has um the contractor has a violation of my yard um he didn't do any work for me so i don't know if that is accurate i think aaron you said you were going to take that off when i spoke to you on the phone 
pick which shop? Uh, that um, which part? Which part? The entire car that that, that the yeah, because you have Carl as a violation on our property as well, but he didn't do any work for us. And I think you had said oh, you were going to take that off. You did. How did you get the brick on your property? Oh uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, a contractor dropped it, and and mainly that was due to. Um, the fact that you know my neighbor's getting his backyard done, and I didn't want the grade to be significantly different than my yard, so the the recommendation was we can grade into your yard. So if they were going to raise or you know fill a certain area, I didn't want to have a divot where all of a sudden I'm going to have pooling water. You know, it would well, be bad that, drainage. That's a, that's a wetland pooling water. Well, no, I mean like you know a poor drainage, you know erosion. So <laughs> the the contractor brought your brick in, or was it Carl brought your brick in? This is a contractor? I don't, I don't know. Who brought the brick in? How'd you get the fill of the material? Yeah, the same, the same people, people that brought it to our house. Local, they were gray, a local gray. guy? Uh, I'm not sure. You don't, know where, you don't know where the brick came from? No. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you next month. Okay. Super. All right. What else are we doing? That's about it. Okay. He's, he's, he's here for the... For this one. He's here for the same thing, though. He? No, he's here for another for one. For the other one, too? Oh, yeah. He's for uh, South Turnpike? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Come on down, Carl. Okay. You're right. It is Carl. Oh, yeah. All right. Name for the record. Carl Kieslick, Little K's Landscaping. Go get close to the mic, this. Carl Kieslick, Little K's Landscaping. Okay. Uh, Aaron, your turn. Okay, so I'm very glad that uh, Carl has shown up tonight. This, the original violation letter went out in June, I believe. I'm trying to look here. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. August, August 9th. It's been a long summer. So. Um, it went out to the owner of South Turnpike. Did not go out to Carl. What recently, then I sent a second notice out to the owner, and then so Carl got also his first notice. Because when I sent out the first notice of violation, I didn't know who put that mulch there. I just knew who owned the property, okay? So the property is owned by an entity, South Turnpike 2 LLC. And that gentleman, it's Mr. Donardis, he, Sal Donardis called me Monday, we had a chat, and um, you know, so on. He's not here tonight, but um, I'm glad Carl showed up. And what happened, it was, I, I counted 50 mulch piles out there. Pictures were sent in the August violation to you, 50, actually 50 piles of mulch, sitting on top of some more mulch on the bottom. Got the notice, I bet the owner called up Carl and said, get those piles out of there. So the piles disappeared. I guess Carl took them out of there, He'll, he can tell us. Piles are gone, that's great, but what remains is two or three feet of compressed mulch in, our, in, our jurisdi in the jurisdictional area to within 10 feet of the river. Now, this isn't tree bark mulch. This isn't mulch you'd like put in your garden. This is crushed up pallets. So I took a photograph of it. It has little, you know, if you look closely, little screws, nails, little um, uh, markers, plastic markers, and you know, tags and stuff in there. This, so then, then the trail led, led back to one of our other violators, South, South Connecticut Pallet Company, which is over at 340-346 Quinnipiac Street. They, they lease an area over there at the Silversmith park over there. And if you recall, they're in trouble because they have a giant, humongous pile of crushed up pallets in the floodway and the floodplain of the Quinnipiac over there. So I had noticed that guy. I sent him a certified letter. And he calls me up right away. The second he got the letter, he said, I didn't put the stuff there. I said, OK. He goes, Carl put the stuff there. I said, little case? He goes, yeah. I paid him to take the material away. I need to get that pile down. So I said, take it away. I paid him to take it away. 
I said, did you ask where he was going to take it? He says, no, no questions asked, just get it out of here. And because planning and zoning is telling them, to, you know, they got to get it out of there. So um, anyway, so somehow it finds its way onto the South Turnpike property. And, and um, anyway, the owner of South Turnpike told me yesterday, I guess, saying he's, he's got to take all the mulch off. He's going to tell the contractor to take all the mulch off. I don't know if he got a chance to call Carl, but that's the way it was. So that's what's going on. That's simple. You're going to take it all out. That's news to me, but okay. Okay. Well, I think we need a deadline. By next month. By next meeting. Okay. Now, that's great. And if you're going to take it out, Carl, that's great. But if you, I don't want any ruts, you know. Well, that's fine. Should we have them put in a sill fence to protect the river? So I we have not put in a silt fence or some sort of Shouldn't be any erosion. Yeah, Ironically, they're using mulch like this instead of silt fence these days. Mm. The road the chips down or mulch down. Mm. Also, the river might, I mean, if it floods, if we get a big, mm -hmm. it'll take that silt fence. So maybe just, okay. just get it done, Carl. Just get it out of there. Okay, see you next month. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else to come before us tonight? Jimmy, you all set? Mike? All set? Jeff? You all set, Jim? Jeff? Ellie? Good. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Necchio or Mr. Caruso? The second. Second was. Yep. Yes.